let us continue with the discussion on variation in transfer. Now, in previous discussion, we have seen the electromagnetic spectrum and also thermal radiation. About thermal radiation, we understood that the thermal radiation is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and the thermal radiation actually includes a part of ultraviolet radiation. And they are visible by and they are infrared. <laughs> so, when you say the radiation, an important term here is energy power. So every body emits radiation, so you can quantify that uh, amount of energy that is being radiated for unit volume. So this is called the monochromatic radiation. So when you quantify it for unit volume, we call it as monochromatic, or also sometimes we call it as spectral. The term spectral is same as monochromatic. So we can define the monochromatic or spectral energy power in the SVP lambda as the rate at which the surface emits thermal radiation at a particular point. And this is for unit area. So if you take a particular board, it will emit radiation at a different board. And if you calculate the monochromatic energy power at different volumes, then if you sum up all this, you will get the total energy power. So the total energy power of the surface is the emitted energy summed out of the all the directions. So it will emit radiation in different directions and as well as at different volumes. So if you sum up the energy, the emitted energy, Different directions and the all volume will get the total energy power of that volume. So you can represent like this Es equal to there will be also equal to P lambda V lambda. And when you discuss about spectral distribution of thermal radiation, actually thermal radiation distribution depends on the temperature as well as the surface character. For example, if you take the case of sun, it is having an effective surface temperature of about 5,800 Kelvin. The emitted radiation from the sun is always under 3 micrometer. At the same time, if you take the case of air, is having an RA surface temperature of about 290 Kelvin. About 90% of the radiation is emitted at different volumes greater than the microphone. So there is a difference in spectral range of sun as well as the radiation. And this difference in spectral range that leads to an important effect called the greenhouse effect, which again causes the global warming. So what do you know about the greenhouse effect? You know, the emitter radiation from the sun also always having low length, less than three micrometer. At the same time, the earth radiations are above three micrometer. That means the entire emitter radiation from the sun that will enter the earth surface or enter the earth atmosphere and it will reach the earth surface. At the same time, the emitter radiation from the earth will not be able to get passed through that. That means this entire solar radiation will be trapped inside a greenhouse. Okay, because the glass, the property of the glass is that the entire radiation limited that will be trapped into it. So this will ultimately lead to absorption of this radiation by the combustion gases as well as other 
yeah, so we are both here. And that leads to rising temperatures and that's what is called global warming. Now the concept of black blackboard radiation. Normally, the emitted radiation from a original body is compared with that of an ideal body. And that ideal body is normally called as a black body. So we can call a black body as an ideal radiator. And it is a body that can emit and absorb radiation at any temperature. And the amount of radiation emitted from such a body at any volume will be the maximum amount. So you can define a black body as a perfect emitter as well as an absorber of radiation. But uh, at any temperature or at any wavelength, no other surface will be able to emit more radiation than that of a black body. So the black body is an ideal body which emits maximum radiation at any given wavelength and given temperature. So you can use this black body concept to compare the radiation emitted from a real surface. So this diagram actually shows a comparison of the radiation emitted from a black body and from a real body. So what you can observe from this figure is that the distribution of radiation emitted from a black body or a black surface is uniform. That means the same amount of energy is emitted in all the directions. That is, the emitter radiation is independent of direction in the case of a black body. At the same time, for a real body, the distribution is non uniform. That means the amount radiates in different directions of the same, not the same. And not in all the directions, we have the same radiation. That means for a real purpose, we have a non uniform distribution of energy, whereas for a black body, we have a <coughs> uniform distribution of energy. So, we'll call this a black body as a diffuse emitter. So, the term diffuse is used to describe a black body. It's a diffuse. Diffuse means it is independent of the diagram. And uh, when you talk about a black body, the told which is an ideal ideal body, is a imaginary concept only. Not any, there is no any body which can be completely told as a black body. So you can approximate, suppose you have a cavity like this. It is maintained at a uniform temperature. Suppose it has a very small cavity here. So what happens is that once the radiation enters the cavity, it gets reflected from the point where it gets incident on the surface inside the cavity. So when it gets incident at one particular point, a part of the energy will be absorbed and the other part will get reflected. The reflected part will be another point. Again, after second reflection, some part at the point, this point, the some part will be absorbed, then it is the remaining event, the remaining the reflector. And then the third point again, some part absorbed, then the remaining event reflected. Again, here it is absorbed some part, then the remaining reflected. And this process will continue till the entire radiation get absorbed from absorbed by the surface after multiple reflections. That means once the radiation enters the surface, enters the cavity, it does not get exit from the entire. The entire radiation entering the cavity will get ultimately absorbed by the surface. That means you can 
so that the entire energy is getting absorbed by this gravity. So you can approximate, or we can call this this gravity as a mass. And it's an important law which is used to quantify the radiation emitted from a black hole. Called Stefan Boltzmann law. And according to Stefan Boltzmann law, the amount of emitted radiation per unit area of a black body is directly proportional to the fourth power of absolute temperature. Or in other words, you can say the amount of energy per unit area equal to. Sigma integral is called as sigma we call as Stephen Boltzmann. So this Stephen Boltzmann law actually quantifies the total emissive power of the black body. That means when you consider black body, it emits radiations in different directions and at different wavelengths. So the quantity what you calculate using this equation gives you the total of the radiation of emitted at different levels. So this is called the total emissive power of the black body. But if you want to quantify the radiation emitted at a particular level, We will use the term monochromatic or spectral emitting power. That means this the amount of energy radiated at a particular level of what is called monochromatic or spectral. And if you have the spectral emitting power at different volumes, and if you sum up the amount of energy emitted at different volumes, you will get the total emitting power. Yeah, that is what this equation represents. Integral, you wrote the lambda, <coughs> EV lambda into D lambda is equal to sigma t raised to power. When you sigma t raised to power, it is the total energy power of the black hole. So this graph actually represents the golden plotted against the monochrome. The area say that we are of the total energy power of the black hole. So the monochromatic or spectral energy power of the black hole is obtained from this Planck's law. So this Planck's law gives the spectral or monochromatic energy power of the black hole. So the expression is Pp lambda equal to P1 by the lambda to the power 5. So it is the P1 by lambda T minus 1. So P1 is the two constants. Pp lambda is the monochromatic energy power. This is the amount of energy radiated at a wavelength equal to lambda. So these two constants are having the values written here. So this equation you can use to find the monochromatic energy power of a black hole. So when you observe this monochromatic energy power plotted against golden, the phone is to different temperature. So each curve represents the plot of monochromatic energy power versus golden at different temperatures. And this is the direction the temperature is increasing. So we can see that each curve is getting peak, is having a peak at a particular moment. And as the temperature increases, but the moment according to this peak can see it increases. And we can find this maximum volume <coughs> or the volume that we see. Energy power is maximum, and if it is designated as lambda max,
can find that maximum lambda max by differentiating the monochromatic electric power. So if you differentiate this equation with respect to lambda, and, we, and if you equate that to zero, you get the equation for this Vb. You get maximum. So that leads to this equation lambda max into temperature is equal to 2.898 per raised to 1 degree meter kelvin. And this inertia <coughs> with the lambda max is the product of this degree, which is the maximum. C is the absolute temperature, and this relation is called Wayne's displacement. So in this session, we have seen three fundamental laws of radiation. The first one is Stephen Boltzmann law, which gives the total energy power. The second is the Planck's law, which gives the spectrum of monochromatic energy power. The third situation is the Modulum that is the monochromatic energy power is maximum. Okay. Thank you.